This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, this is Harold Watson, Zoning Chair of the Stratford Zoning Commission that now sits for its regular monthly meeting on Wednesday, January 26, 2022 at 7 p.m. Due to the coronavirus 19 pandemic, we are conducting this meeting on gotomeetings.com. The quorum for this meeting is three. I will now call the following elected commissioners. Mr. Vigliotti. Here. Mr. Francis. Here. Mr. Watson, here. Ms. Lamberti. Here. Mr. Petricelli. Here. Alternates who may be in attendance also include Linda Manos, Rich Verdet, Chris Silhave, of which we don't need any of them tonight because we have a full commission. We also welcome Jay Habansky, Planning and Zoning Administrator, Gail, De Gail DeCilio, our Recording Secretary. I believe somewhere we should have Patricia Sullivan, our Zoning Legal Counsel, and possibly Daniel Brennan, our Zoning Enforcement Officer. Tonight, I also would love to welcome Laura Hoydick, our mayor, and also Laura Dancho, our council member from District 10. Uh, before we do start anything, I just would like to make a note that's really quite important. Uh, one of our land commissioners who was involved in both planning, zoning, and was one of the founding members of the Greenway, passed away this past weekend. Joe Veshi. His service is at, uh, oh God, I can't remember right now. His obit, obit is out today. So if anybody's interested, his service is tomorrow, I believe. But he was a dedicated, dedicated land commissioner with a huge knowledge base. So remember him in your hearts if you can. Uh, Tonight, we are we are going to have a hearing with petitioners. Uh, before we start, I'd like to just say that our our second um, petitioner is not going to be here tonight. They've asked to delay that until next month. Uh, that is the um, the uh, vessel technologies people. They are coming back to us, which I'm happy to hear, but they will not be here till next month. So that makes our schedule a little a little bit lighter. Tonight, we are going to have um, a presentation for Gold Coast, Tech, uh, Gold Coast by their representative, Barry Knott. Um, so before we start that, I would like to say that um, there will be questions from the um, land board Afterwards, we will then take questions from the public. Uh, before we start that, though, I would like, because I know they have another meeting that they have got to get to, I would like to open up so that our mayor and our councilwoman can both make a statement, which they ask to be able to do to, for us tonight. Is this okay for you to do this now, Laura, so you can go on to your meeting? Hi, uh, this is Laura Dancho. I'm not sure which Laura you're referring to. <laughs> There's two of us here. Um, I'm actually uh, listening to two meetings at the same time. So, um, however you'd like to do this, it's fine. We're getting your other meeting as feedback. Oh, I'll turn it. I'll turn off the volume. Is that what? It's Laura Hoydick. Uh, I, I do appreciate that you allowing me and Councilwoman Dancho to make our comments um, because we have we do have the Raymark meeting that's going on at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so we appreciate and I um, apologize in advance to the, mm -hmm. the presenter, Attorney Knott, because I usually enjoy his eloquence. Um, <laughs> I will have to I will have to watch uh, the videotape, as they say, to hear uh, him present the project to you.
I think we got, I think Laura, are you there, Laura? Yes, both of us are. So, so I'm going to let, do you want to speak now or do you want to speak after? I'm happy to go first if you don't mind. Okay. Okay. Um, is uh, the audio okay? The other meeting, I, I... You're, you're, you're fine now. Okay. Uh, thanks so much um, for giving us this opportunity tonight. Uh, good evening, Chairman Watson and members of the Zoning Commission. I'm Laura Dancho, 30 Ruby Lane, Stratford and Councilwoman for District 10. I'm speaking here tonight in opposition regarding item one on your agenda, a petition of Gold Coast Properties, LLC, to replace section 5.3 to allow a zone change from RS3 and four on Broadbridge Avenue to RM1 zone, allowing for multifamily residential housing. This proposed change would further extend the RM1 zone from Barnum Avenue North to District 10, into District 10 um, to Emerald Place. As you know, Broadbridge Avenue is zoned RS3 and 4 single family and has been for decades to initiate a broad zone change in this well-established small lot single family neighborhood seems an overarching reaction to address a housing issue that cannot be accommodated currently, nor is in character with the area at this time. Deerfield Woods condominiums are the nearest multifamily dwelling located at the Stratford Bridgeport border that is already zoned as such, in addition to Stony Brook Village in District 5. Additionally, Broadbridge Avenue is already home to several small shopping strips that are adequate for the area, as well as ABC Nursery School. It is clear that any proposed development in this area, housing or otherwise, could be dealt with as necessary on an individual basis. Let's talk about multifamily housing since that's what this zoning change is all about. Stratford is a town and as such, people will move into our town and bring their cars. Adding multifamily housing to, into an area, particularly an area that is not TOD, will bring in additional vehicles. This will only add to the already overloaded traffic and documented speeding on Broadbridge Avenue that will contribute to unsafe conditions, which several residents here tonight may speak to. Not only is speed an issue, there's no consistent sidewalk or bike lane and not one single crosswalk for residents to safely access the local shopping strips. You on this commission are all homeowners, so you recognize that this is usually a resident's largest investment. When a home is purchased in an area, buyers consider the current zoning and trust that the regulations of that zone is one way to protect that investment and retain the parameters of a chosen lifestyle. To make a sweeping change from single family to multifamily is drastic. A planned residential development or PRD with housing unit density not exceeding 35 units per acre can never blend with the neighbor's quarter acre property. Instead of protecting the hundreds of current homeowners, including those on surrounding streets, this change will simply make it easier for developers. We all know from past experience that developers will do whatever they need to do to, to develop a property. A zone change in this area is not gonna prevent that. I respectfully request the petition of Gold Coast LLC be denied so that our current Broadbridge Avenue residents and residents on the surrounding streets may continue to rely on the original zoning classification upon which their homes were purchased. I appreciate your time tonight, and I hope that you will consider um, the discussions by myself as well as other people in our district. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Mayor, shall you go? Thank you, Chairman. Good evening, Chairman Watson, Commissioners Vigliotti, Francis, Lamberti, Petroselli, Zoning Administrator Hedbanski, uh, Recording Secretary Gail DeCilio, and Town Attorney Patricia Sullivan. I'm Mayor Laura Hoydick, and I would like to express my concern and caution on proceeding with the proposed text amendment for Sections 5.3 of the Stratford Zoning Regulations. The proposal, which transcends from Barnum Avenue to Emerald Place on Broadbridge Avenue, is very broad and should not be considered as remotely reasonable. The development of 30 to 35 units per acre is too dense, especially considering most housing in the area is RS3 or 4, which is about one house per quarter acre. 
As a community, we have spent significant time, money, and resources outlining our housing issues and setting out process to improve these issues. When the Housing Partnership surveyed Stratford residents about revising housing for multifamily criteria, the town-wide results showed a 41% were in agreement. This is hardly a sentiment of rousing support. This proposal would severely damage and change the criteria for multi, uh, multi-family housing. Our current plan of conservation and development, the housing objectives include the following. To identify appropriate areas for increased density, such as transit-oriented develop, this area is not TOD, is in a TOD district, and this amendment proposal is not a TOD district. And within the implementation of a constant policy that is reiterated in the preservation of the neighborhood and community character, and this should be a primary consideration when approving the design for resident development. That's clearly stated in POCD. If this text amendment is approved, these neighborhood characteristics will drastically change. So this is not in concert with what we have passed by our town bodies. It is my recommendation and hope that the Zoning Commission will keep the public forum of the portion of this application open past tonight's meeting to allow residents of the proposed area to weigh in with their thoughts and concerns. It's also my hope that the Commission will review in depth the POCD and Housing Strategies Report that were adopted by the Stratford Town Council, the Planning Commission, and the Zoning Commission before rendering its final decision on this application. And lastly, it is my hope that the Commission tables this application as to let it pass in its current form would be a travesty and of great detriment to our town. So thank you, Chairman, for allowing Councillor Dancho and I to speak. We appreciate um, your, your consideration. Thank you. Uh, now we are going to move on to the public hearing portion. Uh, I am looking for someone to give. Uh, I'm looking for someone to give me a um, uh, I actually I'm looking for Dion to give me to give me a uh, to read the first of our petitions. Sorry about sorry about that. Um, okay. I make a motion to uh, bring forth the uh, following petitions that are on our agenda for today. And that is. Oh, that is the text amendment for the Gold Coast Properties LLC uh, to repeal the existing uh, section 5.3 and re related sections and replace with a new 5.3. Okay, I need to take. I need a motion to take it off the table. Anybody? A motion to make a motion to take that uh, off the table. Anybody second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, let me see that. Let me see that's Deborah, Harold, Dion, James, Len. I can't see you. Are you? See, I'm here, Harold, but everybody keeps freezing. So, are you? Do you want to take this off the table? Yes, yeah, some moves. Actually, I don't okay. think it's not on the table, is it? I thought it was put on the table by the previous, uh, by the previous group. Previous commission. Yeah, the previous commission, I believe. Uh, we're not. No. I don't think we'll get in trouble. No. Well, maybe I should ask Jay that question then. All we need to do is read the application into the record and then you can turn it over to our applicant. Okay. Uh, I'm going to read the text amendment. Petition of Gold Coast Properties LLC seeking to repeal the existing 5.3 related sections and replace with a new 5.3 titled Plan Residential District, allowing for multifamily residential housing in RM1 zones rs3 rs4 zones along both east and west sides of broadbridge avenue for a depth of 200 feet on each side of the streets between barnum avenue to the south and emerald place to the north uh, with a, a, a note at the bottom a coastal site plan has also been submitted with this application uh, i would now like to introduce our petitioner tonight 
uh, Barry Knott, who is speaking for um, Gold Coast Properties. Barry, are you here? Yes, I am. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the commission, Madam Secretary, Attorney Sullivan, Mr. Chairman, Jay, my name is Barry Knott. I'm a lawyer with the firm of Knott, Knott and Dunn with offices at 1656 Main Street, Stratford. Uh, and uh, I filed this proposed zone text amendment. And I just wanna make reference to the fact that I sent proof of filing this zone text amendment with the town clerk as required by state statute. I did do that on November 23rd. I sent Jay a copy of the recording by email and he has acknowledged having received it. And and Barry, that's my mistake for missing, for forgetting to ask that question. So thank I'm sorry? You. That's my mistake for not asking that question. Oh, yeah. If that's the only mistake we make tonight, Harold, then we're gonna be doing pretty well. I say. Going forward. <laughs> uh, so in any event, I wanna give you a little background as to why I submitted this application. In August of uh, 2021, I was contacted by a real estate developer who was interested in constructing apartments uh, in Stratford. I explained to this gentleman that the only regulations that related to the development of residence apartments in Stratford in the town, with the exception of the transit-oriented development regulation, which is limited to areas around the train station, was section 5.3 of our current zoning regulations which has been obsolete for a number of years. This section of the zoning regulations was created in the early 1980s to allow apartment condominium development in Stratford. The way it was structured, there was a total of 604.5 so-called unit equivalents available townwide with no more than 100 in any one Stratford school district. A unit equivalent equated to a two or three room one bedroom apartment. Over the years, the 604 and a half equivalents were constructed so that none remained as of approximately five years ago. Therefore, the only option available to a developer who wished to build apartments or condominium type development in town was to do so as a TOD application in a limited area of town around the train station or as an affordable housing project under Connecticut General Statute Section 8-30G, the so-called affordable housing statute. The statute provides that a project could be constructed as a so-called affordable housing project under the statute if at least 15% of the units were dedicated to families where total family income is less than 60% of the area median income. Another 15% of the units must be dedicated to families where the total family income is less than 80% of the area median income. Restrictions must be placed on the property limiting sale and rental of these units for a period of 40 years. Therefore, under the affordable housing statute, 30% of the units must be restricted to affordable for 40 years. Historically, Proposed affordable housing projects under the statute have been controversial and oftentimes resulted in significant litigation and expense to both the developer and the zoning commission by way of appeals to the superior court and higher courts. Under the provisions of that statute, the burden of proof is on the zoning commission to explain to the court valid reasons why an affordable housing application has been denied. This is the opposite of the typical situation where the burden of proof is on the developer to prove to the court why the application should have been approved. So they, the statute switches the burden of proof from the applicant to the town. Unfortunately, because Stratford no longer has a valid residence apartment regulation under section 5.3, developers have been forced to submit affordable housing applications under section 8-30G. This is an untenable situation because it places the zoning commission in an almost impossible position of having to justify to a typically unsympathetic court why an application has been denied or modified, even if the reasons for the denial or modification are valid reasons under your existing zoning regulations. 
under the affordable housing statute, the local zoning regulations are not honored by the court and they go out the window. The court does not have to look at our regulations in making a determination as to the appropriateness of an affordable housing project. So our regulations go out the window. If you use those, if you use non-compliance with our own zoning regulations as a reason for denial, you will lose in court. Now I've had numerous discussions with planning and zoning office staff and commissioners over the years concerning the obsolescence of the existing section 5.3. I also know that staff has had discussions with both the planning commission and the zoning commission regarding this issue. Therefore, at the request of my client and with the help of Susmitha, the town planner, and Jay, the planning and zoning administrator, after reviewing the plan of conservation and development and the housing strategies for Stratford, which was adopted by the housing partnership in May of 2021, I drafted this proposed zone text amendment and submitted it to the zoning commission. As required by statute, the zone text amendment was referred to the planning commission the DEEP and regional planning in anticipation of this zoning commission public hearing. The planning commission re, uh, approved the proposed zone text amendment with modifications as it's re, at its regular meeting on November 16, 2021. A copy of the planning commission approval letter is attached to Jay's administrative comments dated January 18th 2022, to which I'll be making reference a little bit later in my presentation. DE, neither DEP nor regional planning provided any comments to uh, planning and zone, our planning and zoning office in response to having received this draft zone text amendment, which leads me to believe that they don't have a problem with it because typically if they do, we get feedback from them uh, in anticipation of the public hearing. So as you can see from the proposed regulation that I submitted, the existing section 5.3 is repealed in its entirety. And the new section 5.3, which is entitled Resi Planned Residential District is substituted in lieu of the old 5.3. In preparing this document, I also scoured the zoning regulations and proposed appropriate amendments to all other sections of the zoning regulations which referenced the previously existing section 5.3. So we won't have a reference in section 14, making reference to a section 5.3 that no longer existed. I went through the zoning regulations and eliminated that potential situation. Now, the purpose of this regulation is, is to encourage and allow smaller scale multifamily developments, which fall in between single family housing and large scale multifamily developments. This proposed PRD use would only be established in the following locations. Within any existing two family district in Stratford, which are district zoned RM1, or in all single family residential districts, either RS3 or RS4, along the east and west sides of Broadbridge Avenue for the depth of 200 feet on each side of the street between Barnum Avenue on the south and Emerald Place on the north. And thirdly, on a parcel of more than one acre that may be adjacent to one of the previously stated districts. Each PRD uh, proposal must be on a parcel containing at least 43,560 square feet, which is the dimension of a real acre as opposed to a 40,000 square foot builder's acre exclusive of areas of wetland and steep slopes as required by the subdivision and the zoning regulation. What I mean by that is if you look at the subdivision and the zoning regulations, when you calculate minimum lot area, you have to exclude from your calculation any property that's wetlands or any property that's a steep slope. If you've got, so if you've got a 45,000 square foot lot and two acres is wet and another two acres is steep slope, then you've really only got 41,000 square feet of buildable area. And therefore, that would not qualify under this regulation because it's less than 46,560 square feet. So you've got to exclude wetland areas and steep slopes from any lot area calculation. 
The maximum lot coverage for by all existing and proposed buildings and other structures must not exceed 60% of the area of the lot. One parking space is required for each dwelling unit containing an efficiency or one bedroom unit and an additional 0.25 parking spaces is required for each bedroom in excess of one bedroom. Building height as defined in the zoning regulations shall not exceed 35 feet and unit density shall not exceed 35 units per acre. Now we had originally gone in with a 40 foot height uh, proposal and that was cut back to 35 feet by the Planning Commission at its meeting in uh, November. All PRD complexes must be serviced by public water and sewer, proper pedestrian circulation, refuse areas, lighting and streetscapes are required by the proposed regulation. All PRD proposals must be approved by the Zoning Commission as a special case after review and comment by the Architectural Review Board. Um, and that's a procedure that's standard for all of our special case applications, by the way. I'm not proposing a procedure that's different than the special case uh, application uh, approval uh, process that currently exists in section 20.1 of the zoning regulations. Now, Jay submitted a extensive administrative comments in his memo of January 18, 2022, and I want to address those. In his paragraph number one, he says, regarding section, my proposed section 5.3.2, why have we chosen the proposed locations for this use? A good question. And my answer to that is when we had originally met with Jay and Susmitha to discuss this proposed application, I suggested at that time that we include commercial property, both CA and CF as an area appropriate for the proposed use in addition to multifamily RM1 zones. Neither Jay nor Susmith thought it was appropriate, appropriate to include commercial property in this proposed regulation as to do so was inconsistent with the plan of conservation and development. They suggested that I include single family residential property in addition to multifamily residential property. And after having had that discussion with them, I looked at the various streetscapes of the town and determined that the proposed lo location along Broadbridge Avenue, which is on both sides of Broadbridge Avenue on way, one acre sites, 200 feet deep, between Barnum Avenue and Emerald Place would be appropriate because that area is serviced by mass transit. Okay, second question, he says, regarding section 5.3.4.2, language regarding the allowable uses should be strongly considered as part of this text amendment, as it will have the ability to change with each PRD application. Well, I, I don't agree with that conclusion because in drafting this section, I limited permitted uses in any planned residential district to the uses specifically allowed in the underlying zones. Now, the uses specifically allowed in an RM1 zone and in the RS3 and RS4 zones are set forth in section 4.1 and 5.1 of the zoning regulations, and these are residential uses. So the underlying zone here where this proposed use is allowed are all residential zones. So I'm not proposing a regulation here that could have commercial uses because commercial uses are not, a, are not permitted uses under section 4.1 and 5.1 of the zoning regulations. So any such proposal would be limited to residential uses as set forth in those two regulations. In number three of his uh, memo, he says regarding section 5.4.3, why is the applicant proposing 60% lot coverage? And he feels that that is too large a lot coverage area. And in thinking about it, I do, I do not disagree with that. And I would not have any objection to that figure being reduced to 40% lot coverage instead of 50% lot coverage, 60% uh, lot coverage. Number four, regarding section 5.3.4.4, does a parking facility include a parking garage or are they only referring to surface parking? 
And under this regulation, a parking facility refers to both underground parking and surface parking. Either is permitted under this proposed regulation, depending upon the circumstances of a particular site. And that would be the appropriateness of that parking would be determined within the context of the special case application that we would be submitting on a given site. Regarding section 5.3.4.5, why was it 10 percent why was the 10 percent open space number chosen once again he feels that 10 percent is too small an area of open space and i do not disagree with him and we have no objection to increasing the open space figure from 10 percent to 15 percent so that it would then be consistent with the tod regulation may i stop you there for one sec barry uh, jay are you here is our current uh, minimum 20 percent is the current is the current minimum i couldn't hear your question the current minimum for open open uh land open space it uh, in, in the tod zone our, our densest zone near the pub, near the train station within a quarter mile of train station we allow for a maximum uh, i'm sorry um, we require a minimum of 15 percent open space on the lot so Barry, you're essentially saying you're in line with the, the okay. Yeah, correct. All right, number six, regarding a section 5.3.4.6, the proposed density of 35 units per acre seems too intense in relation to other densities in town and is recommended, it is recommended that this number be lowered to a maximum range of 15 to 18 bedrooms for 40,000 square feet. Now, this is an important issue and it came up at the planning commission meeting and the commanding the planning commission recommended a density of 20 to 25 units per acre yeah. we still feel that that number is too low and here's the reason why in order to have such a project we need 43,560 square feet of land in the rm1 zone the minimum lot size is 7,500 square feet. Therefore, a total of six RM zone lots would need to be purchased in order to qualify for a PRD proposal in an RM1 zone in order to make up the 43,560 square foot lot area. The average, if the average purchase price for an RM1 property is $250,000, doing the arithmetic, a total of a million five would be needed to purchase a site large enough for a PRD development in RM1 zone. Therefore, 35 units per acre is necessary to make a development in an RM1 zone work if the underlying cost of land is gonna be a million five. Otherwise, the numbers do not work and you're not gonna see any PRD projects in an RM1 zone. Number seven. Regarding section 5.3.4.7, Jay suggests that all utilities be underground, that all meters be screened and not visible from the public right away. We agree with this. Number eight, regarding section 5.3.4.8, Jay suggests that the Planning Commission recommendation that all complete streets and sidewalk policy shall be adopted by each PRD proposal for development and that each development shall have on-site bicycle storage and that this be added to the regulation. We also agree with this. We have no problem with that. Regarding section 5.3.4.9, Jay suggests requiring refuse areas to be either inside the building or completely enclosed with an accessory structure with four walls and a roof with design elements that match the aesthetics of the principal structure be required and once again we have no objection to that additional language Re regarding section 5.3.4.10 jay suggests that requiring the tree warden to approve the planting plan for each prd development and once again we think that is a good idea and we have no objection to it now regarding section 5.3.4.6 on page five as it turns out there's two section 5.4. Excuse me, two section 5.3.4.6s and two 5.3.4.7. That's because of typographical error on my part, and I apologize for that. Well, the first of them is on page five. 
And Jay suggests replacing the first sentence with the following language. Building facades and site improvements significantly exposed to public view shall be constructed with high quality, durable exterior materials. Use of lesser quality materials, including but not limited to masonite panelings, sheet tile, simulated brick, pegboard, vinyl and aluminum siding, external insulation and finished systems, plastic laminate and canopies and awnings made of vinyl is prohibited. I disagree with that language completely, at least as to the use of simulated brick or vinyl and aluminum siding. Simulated brick, vinyl, and aluminum siding should not be prohibited. I'm sitting in a building right now that's 180 years old in the historic district of Stratford on Main Street. And I've got vinyl siding on the side of this house and it looks great. So I don't know why, and, and it's, it's kept me from having to paint the house for the last 25 years. Um, my father, who owned the house before I, used to paint it himself and he was able to paint one side one year, the next side the next year, the third side, and every year he would go around and paint another side of the house hanging off the building on a ladder. A vinyl siding is not something that should be prohibited, nor should um, simulated brick. So I disagree with that prohibition. Regarding section 5.3.4.6 on page five and 5.3.4.7 on page six, as I indicated, that was a typo on my part. These should be numbered respectively 5.3.4.12 and 5.3.4.13. Now regarding section 5.3.4.7 on page six, Jay suggests elimination of the words quote, when reasonably prudent and feasible. And we have no objection to that language being eliminated. Regarding section 5.3.5, this is Jay's number 14, Jay suggests substitution of his language for that which was submitted by the applicant. Jay's language is in his item number 14, and we have no objection to the substitution of this language. Regarding section 5.3.7, Jay suggests changing the term concept development plan to development plan. Obviously, we have no uh, problem with that change. Jay's number 16, regarding sections 5.3.6 and 5.3.6.1, Jay suggest, suggests eliminating these paragraphs as they are unnecessary since special case approval is required. And in reviewing what Jay is saying here, I agree with him those two sections are not necessary and can be eliminated from the regulation. Regarding section 5.3.7K, Jay suggests deleting the words preliminary and generalized to make the submittal more specific. Once again, the applicant has no objection to those modifications. Regarding uh, Jay's number 18, regarding section 5.3.8, Jay indicates that the fee should be based on a fee schedule approved by the Zoning Commission. That was the concept that I had suggested in my uh, proposed amendment, but I think I probably went around it a little bit uh, with a little bit of uh, circumlocution. And I think Jay's suggestion Jay. is a yeah. good one, and we do not have any objection to that. Number 19. Regarding Jay's five point, section 5.3.9, Jay suggests that staff, not the commission, be authorized to make a determination as to the necessity for independent reports and analyses. We have no objection to that. I think that's what would happen anyway. I had put that the commission would make that determination, but I believe the commission has uh, delegated that uh, responsibility to Jay anyway. Jay is number 20 regarding section 5.3.9. Jay suggested additional language be added to this section. The language is in his comment and we have no objection to this uh, additional language as most of the provisions covered uh, by his language are also covered by state statute. 
J number 21 regarding section 5.3.11, J suggests that the findings required for approval should be identical to the special case and site plan review findings, and that a new section 5.3.11J should be added saying, the development plan shall be consistent with all the criteria and objectives identified in section 20.2.1 and 20.2.2 regarding special cases and site plan reviews. That is correct. Uh, that would be appropriate language to be added because as you know, uh, we have submitted this application to be approved as special case and site plan. So that would be appropriate language. J is number 22 regarding section 5.3.15. J suggests that this section is confusing and it should be deleted. And uh, I agree that it is confusing and should be deleted. Regarding section 5.3.16, Jay asked for an explanation of the variance procedure and discourages the use of this language. I also agree that this language should be deleted. Variances should not be necessary. And I, I personally, as an attorney, do not like to apply for variances. Jay's number 24. Regarding page 13, which discusses additional sections of the zoning reg regulations that need to be modified, Jay suggests additional modif modifications be made. He sets forth those additional modifications in his comments, and we agree with the suggested uh, additional comments. Number 25, uh, regarding Jay's additional comments on page four of his January 18th memo, his first one asks, has the applicant explained, have the applicant explained how a typical application would make it through the submittal and approval process? Well, an application would be submitted for special case and site plan approval exactly the same way it is done now under section 20.1. With all of the required supporting documentation, engineering, architecturals, and other required submittals, drainage reports, et cetera. The applicant would not submit any applications requiring multiple approvals unless statutorily mandated applications are required. Such a statutorily mandated other application would be in the case of wetlands being on site or the need of a variance. In situations like that, we would have to apply to the other, uh, the Wetlands Commission first, and the Zoning Commission would not make a decision until it had gotten feedback from the Wetlands Commission. What we don't do is have you make a decision subject to approval by another commission. That is illegal. So you have to have all the information in front of you when you make your decision. So any other approvals that are needed, such as wetlands or variances, must be received by us first before we come to you. And B, the applicant should have created and Barry, a let me just interrupt you one second. The burden is on you, correct? That's right, exactly. Okay. The applicant should have created a definition section defining both plan residential development and, and development plan. I don't agree with that. No such definitions are required. The term plan residential development in this document is simply the title to the proposed zone text amendment. It doesn't need to be defined. And the, and the term development plan simply includes all the documentation necessary to submit a special case and site plan application, all of which are set forth in section 20.1 and 21.1 of the zoning regulations. Then he says, the commission should acquire how the applicant arrived at the proposed density of 35 units per acre. I already went through the arithmetic on that as far as uh, the million five needed for an acre site, et cetera. I, I, I've gone through that once already. I won't do it again now. Uh, D, J uh, references the proposed parking regulation in relation to the old residence apartment regulation. Now, the old residence apartment regulation that J references in this comment was created in the early 90s. It's no longer relevant. It's been obsolete for a number of years. Even when it was not obsolete and there were unit uh, equivalents available, the parking requirements in that regulation were too great. 
uh, it wasn't necessary to provide all the parking spaces that that regulation called for. The regulation was written in 1980-81. It was done uh, at the time when there were very few, if any, condominiums in the town of Stratford. Uh, and people didn't really know what the parking requirements were going to be. The parking requirement for a single family home in Stratford under section 12.5.1 is one parking space per single family house. So if you got a single family house, you're required to have one parking space. The proposed parking regulation here provides for more parking spaces than required for a single family home. Number E, J questions how the proposed regulation will encourage and allow smaller scale multifamily developments. At the 35 uh, minimum units per acre we are proposing, any PRD proposal will be substantially less dense than an affordable housing project that may come in pursuant to section 8-30G of the zoning regulation. Because when an applicant comes in under 8-30G, all bets are off as far as density is concerned. Anything they can get on the site where there's adequate uh, sewer and water to service the number of units they are proposing will be approved, if not by the zoning commission, usually by the court, unless the zoning commission has got a very valid reason for denying the application. So 35 is a reasonable number and is substantially less than the same guy coming in under an affordable trying to get 50 or, or uh, 60 or 70 units per acre in, on an affordable project. Number F, Jay suggests requiring an inclusive zoning approach requiring a percentage of the units to be deed restricted as affordables. I don't think this is a good idea. I think that such requirement would cause a prospective developer to circumvent the PRD zoning regulation altogether and come straight in with an affordable housing application under 8-30G. Such a proposal could also cause unnecessary neighbor, neighborhood opposition to a PRD application. Now, in conclusion, I want to discuss briefly the Planning Commission findings and recommendations. The proposed zone text amendment was approved by the Planning Commission on November 16th, after a very lengthy and detailed public hearing at which many of the issues raised by Jay were discussed. As I indicated earlier, a copy of the Planning Commission approval letter is attached to Jay's administrative comments dated January 18th, 2022, to which I've been referring in my presentation. At this November meeting, the Planning Commission made specific findings to the effect that this proposed zone text amendment regarding Section 5.3 was consistent with the Plan of Conservation of Development, the approved recommendations of the Housing Strategies of Stratford, and the future land use map of the Plan of Conservation, since all the parcels proposed to be included in this regulation are envisioned to be part of Stratford's high or medium density residential uses. So the area that I'm talking about here with my proposed zone text amendment are included in Stratford's future land use map, which is contained in the plan of conservation of development, uh, which are envisioned to be part of Stratford's high or medium density residential uses. In his administrative comments, Jay recommends that this application be denied without prejudice, allowing me to make modifications to return with a more complete proposal. I disagree with this recommendation. It is not necessary if you deny this application with or without prejudice. In my presentation tonight, I have addressed all the issues, every one of the issues raised by Jay in his comments. This is a regulation which has been a long time coming. Your zoning and planning staff has recommended to prior commissions and to you that this regulation be updated and have worked with me extensively to create this regulation. I did, just didn't whip this out on my own arbitrarily and submit it. I had meetings with your staff to go over the proposed language. 
It's been approved by the Planning Commission after lengthy hearing and much discussion. And therefore, I would ask for your favorable consideration with the suggestion, suggested modifications I have included in this presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Barry. Now we will go to our commissioner discussions. Um, I just want to make one comment to Barry, seeing as how I was the planning chair when he came before planning. Um, I don't want you to, uh, you're coming close to misstating what I think planning was saying in this, because we were really insistent on while we gave you the 30 units, um, we recognize that as an enticement to the builders. What we did not want to see is overbuilt units. We specifically spoke about the plant, the uh, housing partnership, where the suggestion was to build small clusters of units, 18 to 20, 18 to 25 on pieces of property. So I, 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 that's what our suggestion was to zoning to think about. How can we encourage that type of building? Um, I, so that's the, the main point that I would like to make here is that um, we did not you know, lay down and <laughs> surrender what we think are the, what are the future needs of Stratford uh, because the future needs of Stratford are housing that fits into the community, housing that offers people in that local community a chance to have alternative ways of living, be it retirement or be it young families. Um, but we definitely, we spent so much time on this with Stratford Housing Partnership in talking about housing in the middle. We're, we're not necessarily, we, we are talking about affordable housing, but affordable housing for people in the middle our school teachers, our policemen, our firemen, you know, all those kind of people who need, they need um, places to stay in Stratford. Um, so I still think 18 units would go a long way towards that. Um, I know that Barry, you have run against the same thing that we run up against all the time. And that is, how do you make this and the affordable um, 830G housing not constantly be a clash. And that is, I don't know if that, if surrendering everything to the way you've written it is a solution to for Stratford either. Still puts us in the, in the, in a litigation phase where what, what we're doing. I, I I don't know. Anybody could I else? On, could I just comment on that, Harold? Sure. Remember, it, this regulation talks about a maximum number of units. Every application for a project is going to have to come in as a special case application with its own individual site plan. That doesn't mean that every application is going to have 20 or 25 units or 30 units. That's the maximum that's allowed. If a site does not call for that number of units because of neighborhood characteristics or topography or whatever else, then the Zoning Commission will have a crack at reducing the number of units within the context of the special case hearing. All I'm asking for is enough units to provide us with flexibility in order to be able to design something that works and with the understanding that you can cut back the number of units at, at the special case hearing if you feel that we've been too aggressive with that which we propose. That's all I wanted to say. Barry, can you go back to your people and say, can you give us some renderings of what a 35 unit, how much density it would fill the space? Well, we, we don't have a specific piece of property. It's, it's all gonna depend upon the size of the property. And okay. at this point, we take do a not one, have a, take a one acre property that's 200 feet deep and is on a town road. It, 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 because that's what we're saying is if you're saying 35 units, uh, 
Yeah, but it's not, appropriate to show, it's not appropriate to show a site plan at a zone text application. I'm because just, a site plan is site specific and it requires engineering and architectural design. It's expensive to do and to do it in a vacuum where no specific piece of property is being identified is, is I think it's an unnecessary request. Well, having been a set designer on, on theater stages, a volume is a volume. A one acre property, no matter whether it's one, 4,000 or 400 and whatever, uh, there's a limited vol volume. Once you remove the setbacks that you can put, let's see what does 35 units look like. Because honestly, zoning is just like everybody else. We're going to have to answer to the people that live in that district. And if the, their voices are loud enough, then nothing's going to happen on this. So we're going to have to find some way to say to them, this is what you, this is what you're going to see. Now, when you came before planning, so Smith gave you images from the architectural review board of what different types of cluster housing, of, I'm not going to go through a whole list of, of townhouses, of a whole series of different range of houses that are in the 18 to 20 uh, unit uh, ideas. Honestly, that's what I know Stratford's looking for. That's what all of our data, when we, when we, when we uh, interviewed 1,500 people in Stratford of all different, all different areas, they were pretty consistent in what they wanted to see in Stratford. Not just wanted to see, but what they wanted to live in. Well, if you can, I, I have an idea, Harold. If you keep the public hearing open tonight, I can inquire of my client as to whether he would be able to do that by the time you meet next on this. I know that, uh, listen, our, 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 our architectural review board has examples, but they're not set on one acre. And I think that's the critical thing. If, if we're saying one acre, we're going to assemble one acre lots, let's see what it, what it is. Can you fit? two-story buildings, 30 two-story buildings on a, on a plot like that, still having the 20% or the 15% open space and the required setbacks. Can you do that? Or does it mean everybody must go to three stories? So well, we, can, I, we can't go to three stories because we got a 35-foot height limitation here. Okay. We can't go so to then, 33 stories. So then planning did their job, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But what I'm saying, Harold, Harold, it may not be appropriate for 30 units to be approved on a one-acre site. It may be you need two acres for 30 units. I See, don't know. Barry, this is what I'm trying to trying to say to you. I know I'm putting the burden on you, but that's what we have to sell to the citizens of Stratford. We need to say, if you can't put 30 on that lot or 35 on that lot, then why are we putting that in the regulation? Let's find out what you can put on the lot and then people will have something real to work with. They can start to imagine what it is. People that live around it can say, I could live with that. If you assemble the two. Think, I think the confusion here has to do with the one acre uh lot size not every prd development is going to be a one acre lot size if 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 it's a two acre lot size then 30 units may be appropriate okay if it's Barry, a one acre no, lot let size, me stop you let me stop you here because that is not what you brought to planning you brought that it was going to be one acre lots we were that that was again and again and again said one acre lots. There was no mention. No, a minimum, a minimum of one acre lots. No, there was one acre lots. You were going to assemble four housing, four houses to come up with a one acre lot. So all of our thinking was that we were not talking about because the the operative word here is what we're looking for in the POCD is not large scale apartment developments. What we're looking for are uh the POCD and the Stratford Housing is looking for medium and small developments. The medium is the oper operative word because that's the only way that you can fit something within the character of one single family homes and still have it look like it fits in Stratford. So 
you have to go back to your people and say, let's think medium. You know, well, just, just, just to be clear, if you look at my proposed zoning regulation, section 5.3.2, I'm suggesting the area where this regulation could go would be in an RM1 district, the RS districts along Broadbridge Avenue, and the third one is on any parcel of more than one acre that is adjacent to one of the previously stated districts. So if you have one acre in an RM1 zone or one acre on Broadbridge Avenue, and you have another acre parcel that's adjacent to one of those parcels, then that's what we are requesting approval for. And that's in section 5.3.2 of my proposed zoning regulation. So well, we weren't I, limiting honestly, it. Honestly, that, 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 then, then I don't think planning picked up on that because I know there were talks about the adjoining property owners. The concern that what was going on in Bridge, on, on uh, Broadbridge, how far would it extend into a one family neighborhood. So what you're saying is it could essentially extend two acres into a neighborhood. Yes. However, planning did not approve that last section that I just read to you with the Thank where you. where the one acre abutting. That was something that planning did not include in its approval. And why might we planning have, we have asked done that? For it, but it wasn't included. But why why might planning have done that? I'm sorry? Why might planning have done that? Well, I don't know. I, I, I did not agree with that. However, that's what the decision that it made. <laughs> you would know better than I as to why they did it. Deborah was there at that meeting, I believe, correct? Ms. Lamberti? Oops, keep trying. Yes, I was. And do you remember that comment, the discussion of how far it would encroach into existing neighborhoods? Yes, I do. And I, I, I don't remember exactly, but I don't agree with that. I agree with you, Harold. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm sitting here having a private right. conversation with Barry. Right. Let me go on. Let me go around, around, um, who else is not, De Deborah, well, Ms. Liberty, you wanna go? Yes, um, I, you know, I, um, I have a lot of reservations about this because it's encroaching on a number of neighborhoods in many districts and um, I am not in favor of this. Okay, James, Mr. Vigliotti. Uh, good evening, Mr. Knott. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I'm encouraged that you are so agreeable to a lot of Mr. Habansky's recommendations. Um, uh, and I, I guess the only thing I would say is um, uh, in terms of density, you know, I, I, I think I agree with Harold that 35 units, uh, a proposal that has that language in it is um, going to be troublesome to a lot of people. Um, and uh, I, I think it's an incredibly high dense density for the neighborhood you're proposing to put it in. Uh, and I just would um, would incur I, I, if if it's possible. I think the recommendation is reasonable, and I would strongly encourage you to consider talking to your people about um, that 15 to 20 units. Uh, 15 to 20 units um you know that seems to be a little bit more reasonable um you know i i think development could happen but you know again you know uh, you got to take into consideration the people that already live there and um you know it, it makes it a little bit easier to get these projects finished um and also i i feel like uh that there should be some consideration for uh strafford being able to increase our affordable housing uh, opportunities for people. Um, if, if you're gonna have development there, um, <clears throat> you know, somewhere in the range of 12 to 15% of the new development uh, should be affordable. 
Otherwise, we're never going to meet our goal of, of, of increasing our affordable stock. That's all I have to say at this point. Thank you. Uh, let me go to Len. Are you you're here still, Mr. Petricelli? Len? Hopefully he will come on. Len, you might be muted. Uh, he's he's unmuted. Are you there? Yeah, I've been trying to call in. My Wi-Fi has been freezing. Yeah, Harold, can you hear me? We, we can hear you now. So you're okay. Well, you were there. Yeah, one can you ago. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Uh, we can hear you. Go. Well, now we lost you, Len. We hear you briefly with an echo. All right. I'm going to, I have a, does any other commissioners want to speak? Because I have a suggestion, but I. No, no, we have. We, you're, you're coming in. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Go. Jay, can you do anything on your end? Uh, he's he's unmuted, and oh, he muted himself. I'm going to try one more time. Hey, Len, can you please turn off the second audio? All right, can you hear me now? Better. Can you hear me now? Yes, go. Yes, go. Don't do anything. Okay, I, I have a suggestion, but I want to make sure all the commissioners have had an opportunity to speak. Uh, no, Commissioner Francis, uh, you want me to go first, Lenny? Oh, we lost Lenny. No, he's he's there, Lenny. He's there. He's... He wants to go last, uh, Harold. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, this is Commissioner Francis speaking. How are you doing, Mr. Knott? Oh. All right. So I, I, have, I have a couple of concerns. Um, I mean, one just to uh, kind of piggyback off of uh, uh, what Jim was uh, referring to with the with the 35 units. Um, I do think that's a very dense, that, that would make it a dense area for one. I mean, because it's a predominantly residential area. And basically, you're giving us no idea what you really actually plan on doing there. It's kind of like uh, giving the developer a blank check saying, all right, well, you know, we're going to open this up to you. You know, we have no idea what you want to build there, you know, in this residential neighborhood. And we have no idea what to expect and to actually give to our constituents that, you know, rely on us to ask these questions. So I think it would be unfair for us to say, all right, yeah, that's, you know, we'll, we'll let you get to 35 or so units, um, even though we don't know really uh, what you want to do in what exact area. I mean, I don't think that's fair to the residents of Stratford. Um, I know the developers most of the time don't really care what the constituents or what the residents want. It's what they want. But I think that your, uh, your people should take that into consideration that we have no idea what specifically you're doing in these locations. Um, there's basically just uh, amendments to our original our original guidelines in, in, in section 5.3 um, and also uh, concerning the 8-30G uh, statute. Uh, we we are very low on our stock on, on uh, affordable housing and we do need to eventually start uh, achieving our goal um, with, with that percentage. And I think you should take into consideration uh, Mr. Bansky's uh, recommendations because I think a lot of them touch base on a lot of concerns, um, not only to the commission, but the residents of Stratford. Um, and I just don't think, it seems like we're kind of, and I see he has a lot of recommendations because it does seem like an like open, open blank check just to let this developer kind of just decide as he goes. I would rather have some some kind of uh, information on what kind of structure, you know, what, uh, how's it going to affect the character of the neighborhood. I, I would have a lot. I, I would feel comfortable with a lot more information than just trying to basically amend our whole 5.3 section.
I, Lenny, we are about ready to move to the public hearing portion here. So if you want to make your statement, I suggest you do it now if you can. Uh, Chairman Watson, this is Jay. I'm going to try to unmute him. Okay. So give me a moment, please. Len, you've been unmuted. Why don't you try and before you start talking, make sure that if you're if you got other secondary audio, turn it down so that we don't hear any echo. Okay, can you hear me now? Clear. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Go. Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Yes, we can hear you, Len. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, talk. talk can you Lenny. hear us? <laughs> Go ahead, Lenny. He must be on a delay. All right, can you hear me now, Harold? Yes. We've been hearing you, Lynn. Harold, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Yes? Yes. Okay, I can't hear you, but you can hear me. Okay, you're shaking your head yes? Yes. All right, based upon, uh, it's a pretty comprehensive uh, amendment that we're looking at here, and there seems to be a lot of reservations to it. I have reservations also, but what I would suggest is that we uh, table this and leave the public portion open so Mr. Knott can come back and in an interim, address some of the concerns that the commissioners have. So I put on the table. Lenny, we've missed you again. Did you get that or? We missed it. Len, just to be clear, we heard you say your suggestion. Hey, can you hear me? Jay, can you hear me? Yes. Just as you started to give your, your suggestion is when you cut out. Well, I, I heard most of what, this is Jay Hibansky, I heard what most of Len Petroselli had said, and I'm not sure if the commission did, but I think uh, Commissioner Petroselli was requesting that, uh, given the concerns uh, that he has and the other commissioners has, that the uh, commission keep the application open and continue it until our February meeting, and that's where he cut off for me, so. Uh, I would like to, we're going to, Jay, I believe we have to wait until we go into administrative yes. session, correct? Yes, we do. So, so we will consider that once we go into administrative session. But it, that is what we're going to be taking. The first thing we're going to take a vote on as soon as we go into administrative session. But we also have a public here tonight for a public hearing. And I would like those people to give their comments so that we can be informed by them, but also that Barry can go away and see what it is that we are facing in terms of what the kind of answers we need to give Stratford citizens. So I'm gonna turn this over to Jay. Is that okay, Jay? Do yes, I need to, Mr. do I need to, do I, do I need to vote us? No, we're not doing anything right now, right? Nope. We're just, we're nope. just moving on. So I'm just gonna do a quick roll call of all the folks that I can see here. First, I'm gonna do the folks that have logged on through the web and I, they, they've identified themselves in some way. Well, and I'm going, I'm going to suggest to everybody, guys, you will have another opportunity to speak next month. So, so please keep your conversations relatively short. I don't know. I looked a little while ago, Jay, and it looks like oh, there's, about, this. Okay. there's about 30 people on the line. Yes. So 30 people times three minutes each is 90 minutes. So that's an hour and a half. So 
try to be mindful of the amount of time. Um, as I would tell my high school English students, <laughs> summarize. All right, Harold, can yeah. you hear me now? I do hear you, Len. All right, we need to take a vote on this and just table it. it no, we're not up. taking a vote on we, this. We can't no. do that yet. We have to do the public hearing and Why then we start we that. We have to first oh, do you the have public to, hearing. Yes. Okay. And then we're the first thing after that is we will do that vote. Okay. Uh, so, Len, just in case you didn't know it, Jay is now starting the public comments. Okay. Everybody, welcome tonight. I'm sorry if our, our little Zoom is a little fractured occasionally. And Barry, I appreciate your graciousness. All right. So uh, this portion of the public hearing will be, uh, since I've got a good view of who's, who's here through our room, uh, anyone who would like to speak in favor, opposition, or just give general comments. So when you hear your name called, uh, please unmute yourself and try to limit your commentary to three minutes if possible. Uh, first up, we have Sarah. Calling twice, Sarah. Calling three times, Sarah. Okay, we'll move on. Next, calling Michael or Mikal. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Michael. Mike. It's Mikal. Okay, Mikal. Go ahead. So I, I disagree with the proposal. Um, just to share a brief experience, uh, we've been living at Stratford for about two years now, and there was an accident right in front of our home, um, and you know it was uh, it, the the person hit like the pole in front of our home and was a mess. And if the person just kind of like made a, a slight variation in the way they turned, they would have just ran in front of our home. So I could just imagine what the traffic will be like if the proposal that you're mentioning uh, gets in, you know, uh, get, get, you know, becomes official. Um, so that that's my concern. I'm just concerned about the traffic and the <clears throat> And just the things that may occur if, if this happens. And um, so I'm just fearful of that. Point of order, Mr. Chairman. Would yes. you uh, kindly have Jay ask the address of the people that are speaking? Yes, that, that's what I was going to stop everybody. Anybody who is speaking now, please give your full name and your address. You don't need to be a Stratford citizen, but you need to have an address and a full name. Uh, Mikkel Moore is my name and 3144 Broadbridge Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. Thank you, Mikhail. Okay, next, uh, Jody Paul, your full name and address, please. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, Jody Paul, 3214 Broadbridge Avenue. Uh, thank you for allowing us to speak tonight. Um, I just wanted to um, speak specifically in regards to the response that Jay had written um, back to the commission points number three and number five are really concerning to me. Um, you know, as mentioned, if there's things that we can possibly compromise with or live with, that's fine. But those things in the current proposal are very concerning in terms of specifically the lot size and the 60% coverage, and as well as the open space. I definitely think that 35 units is way too dense. And I know that the developer has said, um, or Mr. Knott has said that it's up to, but you're writing a regulation which would allow it. So even though you're saying, well, it's up to 35, well, it may be 20, it may be 18, but it could be 35. And so I, I feel as a resident that that's just way too dense. And so I'd rather go with more of a um, what has been proposed, which is the 18 to 20, as opposed to even up to the 30, which was recommended by planning. And the other point um, in number five about the open space, I know you said that you don't disagree with what Jay had proposed. Um, 
increasing that up to 15%. Uh, but I even think that is too small because the comparison he was making and the recommendation he was making was based on what was already the densest part of town in the center. Um, and this is not, this area is not 15%. So our open space is more than 15%. And I think that we should be consistent with this area, not consistent with necessarily just meeting what is our densest area right now. So those would be my primary concerns uh, as well as, yeah, there's major traffic issues on the road. Um, so that's concerning as well, but I'm gonna be brief and leave it at that. May I just inter interject here? Jody Paul, you should put your name in for a committee. Oh, thanks. I'm too busy. <laughs> right, Dion? <laughs> You're smart. Sorry. She's on enough committees. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Next up, Kathy Lombard. Hi, um, I'm Kathy Lombard, 3094 Broadbridge Avenue. Um, I'm also in opposition of this um, program that you're, um, you know, talking okay. about. Uh, the traffic is horrible out here and the congestion of it, the accidents are horrible. We have accidents constantly on Broadbridge Avenue in front of our home, down the block. It's, it's, it's just devastating. I mean, we've helped people out of the car in the middle of the night. It's horrible. So the volume of traffic is my biggest concern of having all of those um, apartments or housing. housing, you know, near me. So that's it, short and sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, up next, uh, M. Shalamiki. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. M. Shalamaki, sec, calling for a second time. Okay, M. Shalamaki. And we'll try to come back one more time for anyone who is, isn't able to, or we can't hear. Uh, next up, Bill O'Brien. Uh, this is Bill O'Brien, 450 Chickadee Lane, and as an elected official, I'm a councilman of the 9th District, and I have to make a lot of decisions concerning um, money for different things, including the Board of Ed, the WPCA, and I'm worried that this is just too intense. I think even 15 to 20 is too is too much, and I just don't know how much more we can handle. Our town is well over 95% developed, and... Uh, 15 to 20 units more. I just, I, I am not in favor of that. So uh, good luck uh, making your decision here. Thanks for listening. Could I ask you a question, Bill? Sure. Could you gather any facts for us and send them to Jay in terms of both the sewer and sewer capacity and enrollment capacity? Oh, sure. Yeah. And if Jay, um, if you could, also give us an update on how developed we are percentage wise because i know there's not much uh, open space left and I'll, I'll get that information for you harold okay thank you um next up we have someone logged in on the web as caller please give your name and address Calling second time, someone identified as caller. Once, twice, okay, moving on. Next, I believe, um, uh, let's miss Moore. Yes, hi. Um, so my Please husband- give your name and address. It's 3144 Broadbridge Avenue. And, and it's Moore, Kashina Moore for reference. Um, again, we would be in opposed to this, um, this, uh, your, your proposal. We would not like to see more traffic in our neighborhood. It's very noisy as it is, um, building units that are on much, such small acreage. It, it seems very concerning to us. 
Um, it, there's also safety issues where that is concerned. We believe that this would be detrimental to our property values in addition. Also, we, we don't, we, we would not want to see um, multi houses, multi unit houses in a single family residential area. Um, Stratford has always been a single family residential area and we would like for it to stay that way. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just so everyone in the meeting is aware, some folks are messaging me in the chat and just letting me know that they don't have any comments at this time. So if you see me skip over some folks, uh, that's why. Uh, next up, we have uh, Carrie Whitham. Hi, this is Carrie Whitham, 2037 Broadbridge Avenue, Stratford, Connecticut. I am speaking as a homeowner, but I was also an alternate on the planning committee um, unable to vote that night um, when the motion was made to approve the proposed text to section 5.3. Um, <laughs> what I want to say first of all is that that motion to approve that proposed text um, was not stated as to who proposed that at that meeting. So that's kind of odd. Um, want to also make note that many Broadbridge Avenue residents are not aware of this proposal and that a planned residential district, according to what was said at that meeting, needs to be consistent with the character of the surrounding area. It needs to blend seamlessly, which it won't even with a maximum density of 20 to 25, which was what the recommended uh, proposal from the committee that night was going to be to zoning and is in the minutes if you would want to look at it. So this is not an apartment or multiple neighborhood. So the other thing is, why is the proposal all the way down to Barnum Avenue from Emerald? I understand that the property that um, might have a proposed developer is looking at an area at the corner of Streckfus Road and Broadbridge Avenue. That area is already a traffic nightmare as it is right where the Esplanade ends heading south toward Barnum. The two lane road ends there and goes to a one lane road just at that point. And, you know, it's a problem there already. Um, and this kind of a development does not, in fact, help our affordable housing presented, uh, percentage. We were told at that meeting by Samitha to consider it a market value rate development. Um, at that November 16th meeting where this proposal um, was approved, very not said in that there was no proposed developer yet um, and that's clearly in the recording if you listen to it but this petition is from Gold Coast Property which is Davis Owen who is a Stratford realtor. Um, I'm still concerned about the parking and the setbacks and they talked about a mixed usage um, situation there and do we even know if the neighbors want that i mean they're talking about being able to stop and get coffee or this or that i mean do we really need that one other thing is um i checked uh the bus schedule today every route on the greater bridgeport transit and route 15 that they have is the only bus route that travels broadbridge avenue and it only goes from Second Hill Lane, because it comes over from Nichols, go, and it only comes down Second Hill Lane, makes a left on Broadbridge, and then goes right onto Stony Brook. That is the only bus that goes on Broadbridge. Um, the bus stop right in front of my house, which is at North and Broadbridge. There is no bus that ever goes in front of my house anymore. Um, all the issues that were, um, delivered today to zoning, the only ones that were addressed were those that were in the media staff letter. And that's clearly stated also, if you listen to the recording, which I listened to again today. And in all due respect, um, Harry Watson was on the planning commission, um, who he is the chairman, he was the chairman of that commission. And now he is the chairman of this commission when this motion was passed 
he obviously had a vote. And I know at that point when he was the chairman of planning, and I know he was elected now to the zoning board, but I find it uncomfortable that he is now voting on this promote uh, on this proposal in his new position. And I feel like he should abstain. That's my only comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next up, Paul Hoytick. Hi, uh, Paul Hoytick, 55 Castle Drive in Stratford. And I just want to uh, say I'm opposed to the uh, the whole plan. And uh, I want to piggyback on uh, Councilor uh, Dancho's comments before about the uh, people buying houses years ago in this neighborhood. There's many neighborhoods affected by this, uh, this plan all the way down uh, from uh, 6th Avenue, all the way down into the, uh, on the Bridgeport line. If, if you took some parcels off of uh, Broadridge Avenue, you would have to go into the neighborhoods directly behind them. And I, I think people are missing that point where you're not gonna get an acre on Broadridge Avenue, so that means you're gonna go back into the adjoining neighborhoods and take part of those neighborhoods which are not similar to the Broadridge Avenue neighborhoods. So that to me is a big effect on on uh, properties and residential uses all the way up and down Broadridge Avenue. Plus the traffic, the traffic on uh, Kenyon Street and um, and Broadridge has accidents like nonstop over there. The people speed down there. And if we ever have a development of Remington Woods and some affordable housing projects going on, we're never going to be able to drive down Broadridge Avenue. So I'm just going to end it by saying I'm a definitely opposed to this project. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, up next, uh, Carol. Carol? One more time, calling Carol. And we're moving on. Oh, okay. Uh, M. Shalamiki, uh, we're going to come back to you now. Is your audio working? Go right ahead, please. Okay, still having technical difficulty. We're going to move on. Uh, Mary Lou Auger. Hi, this is Mary Lou Auger, and I live at 2119 Broadbridge Avenue. I've lived here just shy of 36 years. And I just was made aware of this. So that was, I was glad I was made aware of it. Um, I am opposed to it as it is written, partly because of the size that is in the proposal or what I'm hearing on here. Um, and I'm going to keep it short because we're now, I, I understand we're going to have another chance to talk about this and I'll come with more facts. But it just, I live right on Broadway Avenue. The traffic is horrible and the speeding is horrible. I know I used to enjoy it when I was in college, but now it's really fast. And, um, you know, I had a fatality in front of my house a couple of years ago. Trees have been hit. And I just don't see where it, it makes me nervous with the open-endedness that this is and the length of the scope of this. I don't understand why we have to go from Barnum down to close to Second Hill Lane. Um, to me, it seems like if there's an idea of something, then we should focus on that area. And that's just one of my concerns right now. And I agree with what, um, you know, uh, Laura Dancho said and Mayor Hoydick said and even Paul Hoydick. Um, because this area is just very condensed. And where I live, I actually will tell you where I live, you can come by the house. It's right past between North and, and um, Yukon. And the way it comes up the hill from the Shell Station, it's horrible. People are almost nearly getting in accidents all the time. And the volume of cars on the road is just, they don't even stop for the crosswalk for the kids. I mean, it's, it's amazing. So that's a concern. I'm glad this will be tabled, or I'm assuming this will be tabled if your vote goes the way you said it will. And we'll have another chance to talk about this and more people can weigh in and have a little more very a little more specifications to what we've asked, right? A little more um, clarity on what the whole scope is, and that would help us too, I think. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Up next, Bill Cosa. Good evening, everybody. Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, yeah, we're resident for I don't know roughly thirty years here in Stratford and bought into a residential neighborhood. Um, oh, sorry, Bill Cosa, 2089 Broadbridge Avenue. Uh, and I, we share the same concerns everybody else addressed tonight, the traffic, the, the already dense uh, neighborhood. Um, 
going um not just in on broad bridge but into the other neighboring neighborhoods um yeah we are uh, opposed to this um proposed amendment uh to this particular um i don't know whatever it is hmm? plan. plan all right uh, yeah, i think that's all we have thanks okay thank you up next jean marie sutton Hi everyone. Um, I don't know if you can see me. My camera is not working, but um, yeah, I wasn't, I'm Jean Marie Sutton, 25 Horace Street. Um, I wasn't actually signed up to speak tonight, um, but I just wanted to listen because I've been getting some uh, requests for information from some very concerned neighbors. Um, being in real estate, I understand the need for affordable, what I prefer to call workforce housing in Stratford, and I understand the relationship of why we want to get to 10 percent and, and i understand 830g very very well um i just can't stand that they back us into the corner like the end to corners like this so thank you for having me here tonight and i'm opposed to any project on that on that lot um i'm not i'm just going to listen from here so thank you okay thank you uh greg khan thank you jay um I'm going to ask for some points of clarification, um, being rather new to the topic. Uh, one is, is the lot size really limited to one acre or could it be, for example, one or two housing lots that are contiguous to each other uh, be open for this type of development? Um, Second is why only? Can I may I stop, Greg? What what we, my understanding is that it it is limited to the one acre. This zoning would would be one. Am I correct? No, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, if you look at uh, section five point three point four point one, it says attractive land uh must contain an area of not less than 43,560 square feet exclusive of inland wetland and steep slopes that's an acre so it's a minimum of one acre then uh the question is uh looking at housing partnership uh there was these mid-sized developments maybe where one house would go traditionally a proposal could be for four units of housing on that uh, one house lot uh, is is that allowed under current rs3 and 4 zoning no no um so i think that's an opportunity if you had one or two contiguous one house lots that we could get to that workforce housing uh, density without overwhelming the other neighboring one family housing lots. Uh, well, Jay, that is the way other towns, other cities, the West Coast has, has done it. They have done it incrementally, doing exactly that, building small clusters wherever, the, as they can assemble the, part, the, the parcels. I think what we're we're trying to do here, and what planning was trying to do, was to move the developers to think more about the in the middle housing. Um, so I would I would be in favor of that alternative versus the minimum of forty thousand feet um, idea. Um, second observation is why is it limited to Broadbridge? I mean, RS3 and RS4 uh, encompasses a larger part of the town where, where it's the mid-level housing, 3,000 acre parcels, uh, could also be opportunities for a developer. Um, I didn't understand why it was only limited to this area of Broadbridge. I think we have to turn to Barry to answer that question. Well, I had discussed the potential area of town with staff, and uh, 
in addition to the RM1 zone property, we felt that this Broadbridge Avenue corridor was the most appropriate area um, in town for such development. Because the lot sizes are, are relatively minimal, it's, it's relatively densely uh, developed now. And, you know, when we think about one Stratford, um, if RS3 on Broadbridge and RS4 on Broadbridge, it, my feeling is it should apply to the entire RS3 and RS4 areas. So we're not, quote, prejudiced um, if we do go forward with the idea that if the opportunity arises in any other, for example, uh, East Main Street, um, that they would also be, uh, there may be a, a feeling in town that only Ferry Boulevard and only TOD is getting high density housing. And uh, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If we do go forward, I think it should be a more comprehensive all RS3, RS4. And I'd like the proposal to uh, open to those densities. Um, for example, four units on one lot would be of smaller size than 40,000 acres. As in, um, Otherwise, I'm not really pro or con right now. I just would like to get clarifications and maybe revisions to the proposal. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, this is Jay, Jay Havansky. Uh, just, to, just to clarify, um, you know, a lot of different ideas were thrown around at our initial planning meetings with the applicant, and I never recall ever myself or Susmita suggesting Broadbridge individually. Uh, if anything, we suggested that it be more broadly applied throughout the town uh, through in other zones other than the RM1, um, even maybe in proximity to our train station, including all zones within uh, a mile. Um, I think it's probably more likely tied to the fact that the, the property owner or the, the applicant has property of interest along that corridor, not due to a suggestion by staff. Just, just to clarify that point. Uh, it, to move on, to move on. So we've gotten the easy part of the public commentary done. Everyone who has identified themselves. So now, this part you're going to have to bear with us. We're going to try with our, with our callers, um, and don't forget, as this meeting, it's my understanding this meeting will be continued and left open until next month. Everyone will have an opportunity to, you have the opportunity to send me in writing any commentary that you have that you were unable to get in this evening or come to the next meeting. Um, my email and content, contact information is on the planning and zoning webpage. Uh, under staff contacts, my name is Jay Habanti. All right, so here we go. We're gonna try on our callers. I'm gonna unmute you one at a time. In, um, you're just going to have to start talking, and if you hear your voice, you're on. Um, we have caller, let's see here. Caller number 16, start talking. Uh, please give your name and your address. Okay, no one there. Try our next caller. Caller number 17, please start talking. Okay, no one there. Caller number 13, your name and address, please. Leslie Christini, 3089. Leslie, can you please turn down the audio in the background or we're getting some feedback? Yeah. Okay. Hello, my name is Leslie Christini and I live at 3089 Broadbridge Avenue, Stratford. Um, I've been living here for 75 years. I'm one of four generations that have lived here. What do I like about this neighborhood? It's residential character. 
it basically has its own ambiance. Uh, I also like the fact that there are currently existing conveniences relatively nearby. Um, uh, the big question I have, which has been raised a couple of times, is why why is it just Broadbridge Avenue? But I think that's been addressed somewhat in that there's there appears to be a mystery client or a mystery motive for bringing this up. And I don't want to sound crass, but it doesn't seem, it sounds like it's being presented by a, a, a straw man here, and it doesn't quite make sense. Uh, and I'm trying to be brief and quick here because I understand people, it's late. The, uh, I did a little research on the bus routes also, and I determined that there's roughly a thousand foot of Broadridge Avenue on which a bus travels. And that is again between Second Hill Lane and Success Avenue. It seems to me that this proposal is, it just gives the appearance of a, hey, let's do something proposal, because it doesn't seem to have a, a, a specific uh, purpose. But I guess we'll get into that more with the, uh, in the, uh, the, the next meeting. Uh, I'm certain that any development of this scope and size would entail traffic flow accommodations. You would need to add lanes where you dive into this property and exit from the property. You'd need signage and you'd need additional traffic controls. The road, the system, the traffic system, as I'm sure all of the neighbors would agree, is a mess and it's very dangerous stretch of road. It's just kind of terrible, but that's the way it is at this point, I guess. I also feel that by crowding um, uh, units, housing units at, the, at potentially 35 or 43,000 square feet is going to reduce property values and consequently the tax base. This reference to people going out for coffee and all that business is, is uh, great, except that uh, you're taking your life in your own hands if you're, if you're traversing uh, Broadbridge Avenue. Most places don't have sidewalks. Where there are sidewalks, they're intermittent. Uh, also, it's going to create a need for additional fire and protection. We don't really need more traffic. All in all, in summary, it destroys the fabric of the area. It's a single, basically single-family residential area. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next caller, number seven. I feel like I'm a radio host. <laughs> <laughs> you caller number the seven, one more time. Okay, caller number four. Want to try? Uh, let me, hold on, let me try this again. I'm sorry. Caller number seven, try again. Caller number seven. Okay, next. Caller number four. Your name and address, please. Caller number four. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Chairman, that's that's everyone who has requested to speak, other than some folks who uh, said they don't wish to speak at this time. Um, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the record will be kept open and any public comment can be emailed to me directly. I will make sure it becomes part of the record and uh, delivered to each and every commissioner prior to the next meeting. At this point, I will turn the public hearing back over to Chairman Watson. Uh, just so we make sure we cover this, is there anybody here who wished to speak in favor of who wasn't <laughs> able to speak? Is there anybody here who wants to speak in opposition to who wasn't able to already speak? Hearing none, uh, a motion is in order to close this public hearing. No, 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 no. Are you going to continue the public oh, hearing? Oh, yes. sorry. Whoever did that, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for a motion from someone. Dion? I, I motion to uh, continue the public hearing. 
at, I can give you the date on Wednesday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. I looked it up. All right. <laughs> so is that that's the right date, February 23rd? Wednesday, February 23rd. That is correct. That's when we okay, will so continue this hearing. Okay, so I motion to uh, continue this public hearing on Wednesday, February 23rd, 7 o'clock. Um, can I get a second? Second. Jim Bigliotti. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Dion, aye. Aye. Jim, aye. Lynn? Aye. Do I hear you, Lynn? Aye. Deborah, I hear you. Lynn, do I hear you? Well, we have four to zero. <laughs> we have four to zero, which I guess we're okay. Arrow, um, can you hear me now? Now we can. Go ahead. All right. I, I, yes, it's five to zero. Okay, five to zero. So, uh, thank you, Barry. For thank you very much, us. folks. Thank you. I really, truly appreciate your graciousness. And I'm sorry to be so long-winded. No, that's okay. I hope that you'll get the comments that we heard at tonight. You moved the distance from when you were before planning, so hopefully we'll move even closer. Um, I assume you'll work with Jay with whatever can be gathered between the two. I will also let you know there are a couple obstacles that I think you really are going to have to take back to your clients and address very directly for us to continue all of this in the future to make it go easier. Um, I made notes. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to take a moment to thank you, Chairman Watson, for uh, the time tonight and everyone who spoke, as well as the uh, commissioners. I thank all of our speakers tonight. Yes, thank, thank you. Our, I thank our public for being so well-spoken um, and come back. Uh, our next petition, we're, as I said earlier, we are not gonna, going to be doing. So we are now going to go into our administrative session. Mr. Chairman, can we get a motion to close the public hearing portion of the meeting? I thought that's what we were doing with Dion, but yes. Uh, motion to close the public hearing. Second someone? No, Edward. we're not closing the public hearing. Uh-uh, stop. No, 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 no. I think no, we're not, yeah. That's Mr. Weird. Chairman, so you, you, we can, you all continued the, the application for the text amendment to next month, and now we will conclude the actual public hearing portion of this, of okay. today's meeting. So you, the meeting, the application is still continued, but you have to actually close the public hearing portion. Now. Oh, I was, I, I was under the assumption that we have to keep it open if we're going to have a public hearing next time. It'll be a second Hello. public hearing. Anybody Hello. else? Debbie, Deborah, great. Jim. Jim motioned and Deborah seconded. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No, motion passes. Okay, now we are going into our administrative session. Give me one moment to find my piece of paper. Same with me. Administrative, administrative session. Excuse me? We have to motion to go to administrative session. Yeah. I yes. motion to go to administrative session. Anybody second it? Oh, I can second that. I, I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Ayes have it. So now we're in our administrative session. Uh, what I'd like to now do is vote. The only thing that we're voting on right now is first we can have discussion, then we're going to have a vote on the uh, 
on the Gold Coast properties text uh, text revision 5.3. Anybody want to discuss this, or shall we just order? Order, I, 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 I didn't think. I, administrative items was 1825 Barnum Avenue. Uh, that's, that's the second item. Jay? Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman, um, so since the item was continued and left open, there will be no more discussion uh, off the record. I mean, no more discussion until we reconvene next okay, so month. We don't, we don't need to do anything then. Correct. We can okay. skip over this item and move. Fine. Move. move, move. Next. Then we need to approve our minutes of of December eighth. Jay, do we also need to approve our minutes of January whatever it was, the seventh? We do, but they were left off this agenda. So what we're going to end so up doing can. is we'll, I'll make sure those make sure those are on our February agenda. Okay. We we will survive. Will someone please? What's hard? How can we? Dion and James are the only two people here, and Jay, who have seen these minutes. So the the other option is, is I can send you all, I can send you all a link to the video, and you can all watch the whole entire meeting to ensure that the minutes reflect uh, what happened at the meeting. Oh, and we I, can, I, I, did, I did watch the zoning, the zoning. Okay. So I have I, seen it. So all we need is three votes in, in the affirmative to approve. So we got it then, correct? Dion, were you there? Did you I'm watch the video? Yes, I. Yeah, I motion to approve the minutes of uh, J, what, I mean December fifth, right? Uh, December eighth. Eighth, December eighth. James, I need you to second it. Uh, second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Watson, Francis, and Vigliotti. Um, were the only people with knowledge, unless Deborah, you saw that video. No, I did not. Okay, so we're cool. Uh, Len did not see that video. I don't see Len. Did you see that video? So it's three yet yeah, three eyes and two abstained. Okay, the next thing we have on our on our schedule is administrative site plan review. From 820, 1825 Barnum Avenue, rooftop rooftop telecommunications equipment. I'm going to let Jay explain briefly what this is. It shouldn't be too complicated. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jay Habansky here this is an application for to add new rooftop telecom telecom equipment for the petitioner dish network. Uh, at the property subject location of 1825 Barnum Avenue. Uh, per section 3.28 of the regulations, uh, the proposed location for the rooftop equipment falls within the B category. The Stratford zoning regulations categorize by preference where uh, telecom equipment can and cannot go. Uh, A is obviously most preferred, and I think it's F is the least preferred. Per preferred this falls within B uh, an A category I believe does not require any any public hearing it's just approved over the counter the B category which this application falls into uh, only requires an administrative uh, site plan approval from the zoning commission and the other the other locations um, all require a special case or some form of public hearing so um, you know the, the Let's see. So the commission can, um, let's see here. The commission can condition that uh, the, uh, the equipment be painted to match uh, the existing rooftop equipment that's already up there or the, uh, the existing building color. Uh, those were some of my suggestions. And um, other than those aesthetic concerns, uh, or comments, my office has no no major concerns. Uh, no, I'm not. Deborah. Well, well, uh, actually, what? I pass this building Are on Barnum Avenue. Are you ready? Are you watching? I'm sorry. Oh. Go ahead, Deborah. I'm sorry. 
I, I pass this building on Bartim Avenue every day because I work, you know, very shortly before that. And I've never noticed anything that was negative. It's a commercial, uh, I think it's a professional building. And the only thing is, I think Jay's um, recommendations are good because it may impact the, the residents behind the building. So I think some screening or painting would be uh, the best thing to do. Thank you. Mike, thank you. Uh, I have a question for Jay. Jay, uh, is this a pad they're putting in that they can add additional equipment to? Or is this a finite? It is, no, it's, I, I'm pulling out the plans again here. Give me just a moment. So on top of the roof structure, there's a number of steel platforms. And on top of those platforms, there's catwalks to all the different providers that are up there, including some additional rooftop equipment. Um, probably equipment cabinets that are there to uh, support all the existing telecom uh, up there. Just by looking at the, let's see, sheet number A2 on their, on their submitted plans, it looks like the, the, the new platforms that are to be installed, um, I would say maybe one quarter of them are are with new equipment. So there appears to be additional room for future expansion. Um, yeah, there appears to be room for future expansion for more co-location co of telecom equipment, which is essentially what the town is is encouraging. We, we prefer to see co-location of telecom as opposed to new stuff on every corner. Uh, uh, my thinking is if we would ask them to put a screening fence around that, that top of the roof, then essentially they could put whatever they want in there until it fills up. And well, we would not have them have, have to have them coming back. Well, my only recommendation is that, you know, I'll just be honest, I, I am not, <laughs> my cell phone rings and I pick it up or I turn my television on and it works. So uh, you may want to, you may want to embed the, some flexibility that the applicant shall either screen from view or paint to match um, so that we're essentially hopefully achieving the same thing uh, while giving the applicant the flexibility to make sure that their equipment is working and not have to come back again. I could live with that. Anybody want to have a motion or are there, are there any other discussion? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is Commissioner Francis. Um, I, I believe that this, I mean, this amendment is, um, is in the realms of uh, all the other equipment that's on on that roof, and it's rated as a, actually a, a B is the second most preferred location, and I, I don't think that it's a, a very invasive uh, situation that we're involved in right now with this with this uh, amendment. So, but I do motion to uh, to amend uh, the text amendment, proposing that they either have screening or painting of the equipment to match the existing building and, and i just want to clarify that just the subject application it's not a text amendment it's a site plan review just oh, so clear. Plan review. thank you thank you jay mr petricelli are you still there i can't tell uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to uh, try to unmute him because he it's, keeps muting for some reason. That actually was happening happening to me a little while ago. Mr. Petricelli, are you there? And he might be locked. Okay. I think we can, we can still vote because we have four people here. I have a question. Yes, sir. So um, if you're looking at the photo uh, on the proposal, uh, I, I'm assuming that this is um, not a, a rendering. This is the photo of the building as it exists. I can't see the date, but this is the, so all that very large equipment is already on top of the building already? It is. 
that's an existing photo. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody want to make a motion? Oh, I did. Oh, so basically, I, I, I motioned to approve this uh, site plan with the an amendment of the uh, contractor either painting the equipment um, as the existing building, the same color as the existing building, or um, providing a screen. Okay. Anybody second that? Ms. Yeah, Lamberti? I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. aye. Anybody opposed? We're going to say four to zero or four to abstain because we can't get through to Lynn. Is that true? Okay. So I assume that Jay will be giving us more information before our next meeting on the update. Yes, Ms. Lamberti. I was going to say motion to adjourn. <laughs> well, yeah, that's where I was getting to. I just wanted uh, to. We've got one more item, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's what I was looking oh. to see if there was something that we and missed. It's not on the agenda. Um, oh, and yeah. we discussed this. And, and and I can give a little background and I'll let you all decide what you want to do. So now, um, wait, but the, before he starts, I want you guys to know that this was discussed when I was an alternate six years ago, almost on planning and Jay was in charge of those meetings. Go ahead, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago. So I'll just try to quickly give a background. Um, Last year, the Zoning Commission had get, requested an informal referral from the Planning Commission to consider whether or not the town should uh, enter into a moratorium regarding new legislation regarding recreational cannabis. Uh, the Planning Commission at the January 19th meeting had uh, taken the time and discussed this informally, just an informal re uh, recommendation. Uh, to the Zoning Commission, um, which we received after uh, we posted, I'm, I'm sorry, drafted our, our uh, work agenda. So to discuss this any further, you all would have to waive the rules to add this to the agenda so that we can discuss this informally. There's no voting or anything that's going on. There's no formal voting, I should say. I'll leave it at that and let you all discuss. Will someone give me a motion to waive the rules? Go ahead, Deborah. <laughs> yes, Miss Lombardi. I'm not sure what this means. Forgive me, but I'm That's new okay. to this. <laughs> Say, I, I I I make a motion I, I, to waive the rules. I I make a motion to waive the rules. And bring and add this to our uh add this to our add agenda. this to our agenda. Well, that's perfect. I second All in that. favor. Jim seconds Aye. it. All in favor? Aye. Everybody? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Okay, great. Now we're going to let Jay speak to us about this. Okay, thank you, uh, Jay Habansky here. And I apologize it's not on the agenda, although the, the timing just didn't work, work out well for us this month. So at the last, uh, as I mentioned, the Planning Commission, uh, at the request of our last Zoning Commission, gave you all an informal uh, recommendation at the January 18th Planning Commission meeting. And I just wanna read it quickly into the record here. Chairman Watson, at the regularly scheduled uh, meeting held January 18th, 2022, the Planning Commission discussed the subject matter and the members unanimously, unanimously agreed to recommend that the Zoning Commission place a six month moratorium on development, on the development and adoption of recreational cannabis regulations by the town. The members of the Planning Commission suggested that the Zoning Commission can seek more input regarding this from members of other town boards, departments, board of education, and local community groups, as well as hold public hearings to determine the impact such regulation would have on the Stratford community. On behalf of the Planning Commission, I would like to thank you for your consideration in this matter. Regards, Susmita Hatoda, Town Planner. So essentially what I would like to do, or uh, I would, uh, 
encourage you all to discuss whether how you feel about this one way or the other. So last October, I had prepared a draft moratorium while, I mean, and we were, I mean, think about how different the world was last October to the way it is now. And um, I would say a vast majority of the towns in the state of Connecticut have adopted a moratorium and uh, decided what are trying to figure out what they're going to do, if anything, uh, as these permits and licenses are now being applied for at the state level. I would say I get anywhere from five to 10 calls from dispensaries and producers every single day about what is Stratford doing. And they all know that we're meeting tonight to discuss this informally. So I'll probably have a hundred calls tomorrow morning about what was the result. So I think the commission has the opportunity to do a, a, a few things. One, to instruct me to draft a moratorium uh, for six, six months, for one year. And um, I will draft, take a formal application, put it together just like the one we saw tonight. Um, make sure it goes through all the proper channels and then you all would discuss it formally at a public hearing next month. Um, after that, assuming that that moratorium is adopted, um, you then would spend the next six months to a year discussing what it is that you wanna do, uh, how you wanna include recreational cannabis, cannabis into our regulations at some point. Um, you know, we spent a good year probably two or three years actually on the medical medical cannabis uh, regulations. And uh, they worked out really well. I'm really proud of how they, those regulations came out. So option two is to instruct me to draft regulations um, that would include recreational cannabis in the similar locations that we allow for medical cannabis distribution and medical cannabis production. So, you know, we allow medical cannabis to be sold at licensed facilities in certain commercial zones. You can you could say, well, we just we want to see recreational cannabis sold in the same exact place. It's the same thought process, just a uh, different system of, I guess, how it's distributed. Same with production. Uh, so that's option two. Option three is to do nothing and eventually we'll start getting applications in because the state will be treating these as any retail use, like a tea shop, like a CBD store. It's just like, uh, like a grocery store. It's a retail use. However, it requires a public hearing. So under that set of circumstances, I would tell any callers that you just submit an application for a special case and you will be evaluated on a case by case basis. So I have a load of material that I am happy to share with everybody um, about what a, a moratorium might look like, a little cheat sheet on uh, the, the recreational cannabis um, uh, legislation that was adopted and no one has to make any decisions tonight, although you may feel that you all feel firmly one way or the other, and you can give me direction tonight. Um, or you can say, look, we're going to, let's put it on the agenda next month and we'll make a formal decision maybe next month. So uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll turn this back over to you and uh, let you all discuss. Uh, okay. I, I'm going to make my comment really short. Uh, I lost my partner to cancer. We had to travel to Milford uh, every week to get his cannabis. Um, but I have friends who live in the Berkshires who now are making a million dollars a year growing recreational pot. So they're paying their eight to 10% of local taxes on, based on that amount. So it's become a really, a real, really productive profit-making industry that we should not give up so quickly. Yes, Deborah. Um, you know, I'll clarify that. It's like recreational and medicinal. I mean, we did recreational <laughs> times. Um, 
but but so we can get medicinal in Connecticut, but not recreational. Currently, in in medicinal was what was legal up until now. I think last right. year is when is when recreational became legal because every state around us has made it legal. So we're the okay. last around. Um, so we don't have recreational legal. Jay, you can answer that. So recreational marijuana is legal to smoke and and uh, and have and and have, but it's there's no system in place currently to sell it. So the state is currently soliciting applicants to apply for a license to set up a dispensary. So the first phase of the licensing is they are trying to allow established dispensaries to partner with um, uh, disenfranchised members of the community, those who uh, may be entrepreneurs who are less likely or don't have the capital to establish uh, this type of business. Those applications are being considered first. And then I believe once that round goes through and licenses are selected, a second round of just general lottery type of selection for if you qualify, you fill out the applications, you meet the qualifications, um, you could you would get entered into a lottery and you could potentially be selected uh, to sell. Jay, how uh, much of that falls on? Jay, correct me really Go quick, ahead. Jay. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, with our per capita population, now we are we are we have to stay consistent with no more than two dispensaries for the town of Stratford per twenty five thousand people per population of this town. Correct? It's, I believe it's so it's one license for every twenty five thousand residents. We have fifty two thousand six hundred and four residents, I think, and so that that's that's two licenses. Oh, go ahead, Hero. That's all. I just, I just wanted to verify that. And that, no, no, that's okay. that may change. I mean, that the state has already said that number may change because I'm sure at one point that's the same way that they regulate uh, liquor stores, but it's with a di lower number. I think it's one one package store for every five thousand residents. Honestly, it's partly because of there was not enough pot around. Well, the the new growing facility we have down on Access Road is partly the state recognizing we got to get a lot of growers if we're going to have enough to fill all of these possible certificates so it was a, a a need of lack of product that the state was recognizing when they said two per town so jay is right that could all change as as more inventory starts being produced so uh, i'll i'll add well, actually, I don't want to. Uh, not all the commissioners that have had a chance to speak yet, so I'll I'll be quiet. Firm. James. Uh, I, you know, at this point, my my initial thinking right now is that a six month moratorium might be a good idea. It allows us to see what the rest of the state is doing, um, and it allows us to get uh, a chance to, um, you know, to kind of figure out what we want to do. I'm leaning towards the idea of medical and recreation uh, being dispensed in the same place at this point, just, you know, at this initial time. Those are my thoughts, thoughts at this point. But I, I don't think we should wait too long. Like, I think a six-month moratorium might be reasonable because we don't really have it all figured out. But uh, I, I, to go much longer than that, then we might miss, I don't know, there, there, we might miss some opportunity uh, if we wait too long. I'm, I'm sorry yeah, to jump in here. I, 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 is it out of place uh, you, for me to ask questions yeah, at you, all? Yeah, you theoretically, you, yes. Sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, we apologize. Um, but I do agree with Jim. I don't want to wait too long. I think a six month six month moratorium would be perfect. Um, just to assess some of, and do some research on some of our uh, uh the, the towns and cities on the outskirts of Stratford, see what they're doing, um, especially Milford, um, because they do have dispensaries now. I just want to get. I just want to collect a little bit more information. I I, I don't oppose it. I mean, I know uh, family members and friends who utilize it that have you know cancer and other sicknesses that utilize it and and it comes in, um, as a need. Um, and I don't 
I've known towns uh, that have a surplus of taxes from some of these dispensaries, so we can benefit that way too as a town. Maybe they'll give us some relief on our our taxes, <laughs> but but that, you know. So I think that's a positive note. My only comment is that that this has been Jay. Correct me if I'm wrong. This has been moratorium for years. So I just don't want to see us just stick another moratorium on well, it because we're worried always about what is the general public in Stratford going to say. Um, if we were to have a public hearing, you guys would see how opposed people are to each other's own feelings. Now maybe that's changed. Well, how about we just motion uh, Jay to um, that that second option where Jay can uh, write up some some legislation or some 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 points on uh, what we can go by so we can kind of start from there and build on that could that be an option well i know it is i mean jay said it was an option but i, I you know what you're right why why keep uh, kicking the bucket or kicking the can down the road when we as a commission can actually well honestly it's like my almost my 69 years pot hasn't gone away it's not going to go away i don't think i maybe i'm wrong but it started out like beer i mean beer was in prohibition and right. uh, it, 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 there's next stores everywhere that's a, that's absolutely right uh the one thing that i can tell you jay you had something to do with it you brought in a speaker who was a uh, grower he was a grower not a not a retailer uh, like two years before we got this facility in Stratford but he had every bit of the information at his fingertips he was so smart with with understanding what we we're looking for and what we need to be armed with in order to make any kind of a law state I don't know if that guy is available but maybe if we were to do a public hearing and have this guy present, maybe we need to do something like that again, just to gauge how are the people in Stratford feeling about this. Uh, when we did it several years ago, it, it was the, the story wasn't told. Yes, Jay. Uh, I, I I think yeah, Jay Havans here. Uh, I I think. Before you have any kind of public hearings about anything, you have to have an actual application before it. So what I would recommend is informal study done by this commission and the planning commission, if you so choose, prior to having any public comment. I think what you want to have is you all have oh. a, ref a, a product uh, 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 I'm sorry, an, app, an, app, an application that, that can garner public comment. So, you know, you all may say, look, maybe we just add recreational cannabis to the, to the medical and Jay put together an application. We're going to refer it to the planning commission and then we'll look at it. We can take public comment and then decide, look, we don't want to do it. And that's what happens. Um, Miss Liberty. So we're we're not waiting for someone to apply, you know, or ask for, um, you know, to do a dispensary quote and cannabis um, thing, but we're just gonna just try to like come up with something that somebody might ask for. Well, the, states, the state has given municipalities the authority to regulate where you want to okay. put it, um, what zones, and and whereas I thought it might have been more appropriate to maybe have the moratorium last year and right around now when their people are applying for it, right around now is where we would be lifting that moratorium potentially. and and as people are beginning to get their state applications. We're kind of a little late to the game now. Technically, at this moment, someone could apply to do it tomorrow. 
Okay. And it would just require a public hearing in front of you all. And maybe that's what you all want. Maybe you say, look, let's just let see what happens. Um, uh, don't we kind of want a game plan as a, even as a planning commission and a zoning commission to kind of have some kind of guidelines that we all agree on to kind of start rolling it out? I mean, even the info from you to have, uh, to reference, you know, so we're just not kind of this, have an applicant come in and we're like, oh, well, uh, well, uh, uh. <laughs> that would make me more comfortable to present some options to you all. And then you say, we look, we hate what well, option one. Okay. Two, three, we like, um, and then we go for, have discussion from there, but. Well, I, honestly, that is something we could all actually bring before the public and say, here are three options. We have to vote on one of them. Let us know what you think. I mean, we could actually, that would be a great way to uh, focus a public hearing. Uh, yes, but it's not a was. public hearing, Mr. Chairman. Uh, oh, because it's not, okay. Because there's no application. This is a discussion between elected. It's really supposed to only be during our administrative sessions, the elected officials and staff communicating okay. together. That's why I said if we were if we were to get refer I mean get ideas and suggestions from planning also I mean well from Jay and then discuss them I guess and coordinate with planning I, I, we, I we did this person. we did this with planning and zoning together we actually called a joint meeting to discuss medical marijuana years ago that's how we did it I believe I think we should do it again like that. So do you want a moratorium in place to allow that process to happen comfortably? Or are you willing to kind of roll the dice and see what happens in the I meantime? Think I'm much, I'd rather you come up with um, some kind of guidelines and, and some of the research that you have to give to us so we can have like something to work with to have information maybe. And, and maybe uh, a, a three month moratorium instead, right? Three month moratorium, so we have time to discuss and we have time to come up with some uh, agreement and and you know have a chance to uh, everybody to kind of be comfortable with what we want to do going forward. But it doesn't have to be you know six but months like, or a year. Jen, yeah. Like uh, Jen, Jay said, we've been in a moratorium. Well, I mean, at some point we have to start discussing it. So it basically, us not going into a moratorium doesn't mean that you know things are just go. They still have to come in front of the commission, right, Jay? Uh, I just want to clarify. There was no moratorium on recreational cannabis. Yeah, it, was, it was just illegal. It was only on medical. It was only there was a moratorium on the medical so uh, cannabis. Two medicals. Okay. So, so staff is really just kind of looking for some direction. Um, and it, you may not be ready to, to give that direction yet. You may need to wait another month as I present some more information and materials. And then, uh, I, you know, I, I can make sure that you have as much information that I can possibly give you, maybe some draft regulations uh, without a moratorium, maybe one with uh, one that shows what a moratorium, uh, one that would include a moratorium. Um, and then just some general information about maybe the benefits that we know of and any information that may detract, uh, take away from it. So I'm just going to just give us a whole slew of information. <laughs> just Good luck next month. <laughs> the, the only thing is, Jay, that part of these regulations, I believe, requires us to have a smoke, a free smoking area somewhere in town. If and that's do, ordinance related. Town code wise, that's nothing that we need to be worried about. As so that, uh, that doesn't have to figure in. If we say yes to this, then they that will just have to happen. You can still smoke and carry marijuana. You just can't. We're talking about just the retail sale of it. OK. Oh, oh, then we could do this. OK. Yeah. Proceed, Jay, I think. Do we need to vote on this? Not really. It was just a discussion. No, we just need to instruct Jay to provide us with more research and material so we can make a better a better decision. There you go, Dion. 
That's so they vote. were instructing you. <laughs> and do you all want to vote just to say, just to get consensus on whether or not that's what you want to do? Yes. Yes, Jay. Yes, Jay. Right. Yes, Jay. Yes. Okay. And Lenny has disappeared. No, I think Len's back. I just heard him. Oh, Len. Yeah, I just got back, so I missed three quarters of the conversation. So what are we well, doing now? Do you want to meet us on on short? Jay, you want to try to give us some synopsis? <laughs> We're sure. I, uh, uh, Len, we just talked about all the different options about re recreational cannabis, and there's the option for a moratorium. There's an option to just modify our existing regulations. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put together some drafts for each one of those options and then as well as include as much legitimate information that I can, can for you all to review to maybe help you all make ed an educated decision one way or the other. So that's the commissioners were, were just discussing whether or not they were just voting on whether or not they wanted to give me the direction and vote on uh, give me the direction to do that. And the only other thing we did was we voted on uh, painting telecommunications equipment on top of a building on Barnum, which we didn't record a vote for you. That's fine. Painting and screening. I, that, yeah. I'd be for that. Uh, the only thing is. Oh God, you got out <laughs> Actually, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna speak for Len because okay. we talked about this. It's like we would Is be it? more comfortable meeting in person, wearing masks, and meeting in town hall. So I I make a motion that. Oh, Jay is saying let Jay. Say. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Commissioner Liberty, I just want to say that when we scheduled tonight's meeting, we were in a very different time. <laughs> a lot happens in three weeks. Right. I mean, it was everyone and their yeah. mother was sick. And the last right. thing anyone wanted, I didn't, I made the decision for this month um, to have a remote meeting. And I think that the way things are trending just in terms of, cause I need to look out for my staff as well. I'm not the only ones at these meetings as well as you all. I care all about you all. Um, I'm certainly more comfortable and I know staff is about having in-person meetings as long as things continue to trend the way they are. And I think that I'm happy to schedule that if that's what you all um, agree upon. I, that's all I wanted to say. I'm old and three of my well, actually, friends. Jay, it wasn't all up to you. We did actually vote on that, didn't we? to have Zoom meetings. So it wasn't all on Jay because the numbers were going up. And so we no, like, this, I, I wasn't, be safe and sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't like blaming Jay. I, I was saying, I, I think I we didn't take it that way, Debbie. if we could meet in person. <laughs> I didn't take it that way, Debbie. Don't worry about it. Thanks. <laughs> Deborah, if, if you will put up with me in a mask, I can, I will do that. I, <laughs> I'm very cautious right now because I have so many friends that have COVID that. Um, uh, it's the yeah, worst I mean, right you now. know, but I, you know, I've I've known people that have COVID and it lasts like a few days. It's not terrible, you know. God willing. Uh, and I'll so, add that. I mean, I know that didn't look too bad tonight with that public commentary, but that is not easy. I'm getting chat messages and text yeah. messages and emails. Well, that that's, the the that's not easy you. to do. You're the ringmaster. I I was like, watching you. So do you want to wing it for, you know, maybe, you know, next meeting and then we'll figure it out? Is that, well, I think we're that towards towards can we change it? I think that, Jay, you would have to re-advertise everything, right? You, you haven't no, so, done it yet. So we haven't advertised anything for next month. We wanted to wait um, to see, to have this conversation. No, I mean, we're no, trying my honest feeling is let's wait until the end of February, which is what we had said we were going to do, because there's also a new variant that has just popped up. And they what? don't know. Yeah, just to, I saw it today on CNN. Um, so what are we saying? It's not Omicron. It's a new variant. Well, so, I, I'm waiting for my next booster. 
<laughs> That's you exactly know, what they're saying is you're going to have to have a I, new I'm booster. I'm happy for to it. get a booster and a flu shot and whatever they want me to take. Yeah, I hear you. So, what are we saying for the next meeting? If Jay can tolerate it, I say we do the next one more meeting. Um, because I know it was tough on Jay, but it actually got people focused. We actually had better people speaking, less people rambling uh, in terms of the public that I think I like that. Like we got through a lot of people in a short period of time, but yeah, there was a lot of people that went straight to the point and, and yeah, I, I, I listen, I, I'm not the, I'm not the whole committee. So there are four other people who get to make a choice on this. And I mean, I can tolerate, I'm one of six children and uh, I've been working in land use for a long time, so I can tolerate a lot. I'm going to go at your direction, whatever you all decide that you want to do, and that's what, that's what I'm comfortable doing. Okay, I'm comfortable so both. we were in the middle of voting on marijuana, but now we need to do a quick vote for Jay. Do we want to hold the next one virtual or do we want to go live? Well, I mean, I would love to be in the chambers and listen, we were on the commission doing this Zoom crap a lot <laughs> and it's not always fun. Um, but I, I, I mean, I like to play it safe and sorry because I do have my mother-in-law that has issues that come over all the time. I, I just, and you know, you're talking about something I don't even know, some new variant. I say one more session of Zoom, see what's going on and we can make this decision after that and then I would love to get back to the chamber. Okay, so we all need to bow down in front of Jay if he agrees to do one more public hearing for us. And then we will go on afterwards, Deborah, and we'll go on and start trying a live one again. Since all we have to do is go there or stay here. It's not, it, 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 we can do both. At it doesn't matter to me. I mean, at a week's notice. As long as we don't get no crazy news. Well, and... Father. James froze. Uh, um, no, oh, James, yeah. I, we're, we're all here. All okay. right. I'll, I'll, I'll renege, but one more. <laughs> I like meeting people in person and seeing people. Yeah, in I, person. I hear you. I have, uh, I have. Next week, I have the Greenway Committee online again. Nuts. All right. So, Jay, we're going to do one more. And then hopefully after that, we will go and we'll try live one and see what happens. All right. Can you hear okay. me? Well, I would prefer live. But can I say something about this marijuana? You certainly may. My issue with this is that people in Stratford, if we don't, if we have a moratorium, they're going to go to some other town, they're going to buy it and just bring it back into Stratford, and we're not going to see one dime. Bingo, so we're not, bingo. If we think, I, yeah, I, I, I think you're wrong. If no, they want it, they're going to go I buy it. I agree with you. I agree with no, you. No, I, I agree with you too, Lenny. I agree. Yeah. yeah I I, mean, that, that, that's the point I made about my, my best friend's godson who started a pot recreational pot facility in in uh, Great Barrington. He's a millionaire in a year's time. He's paying taxes. So it's set up in a way that the local community gets a good deal of that money. It's not all state money. So- All right, I'm done. Call the question. You, Someone? James, you've been very quiet tonight. Motion to adjourn. Anybody second that? Deborah, thank you. Listen, thank you guys for being so good to me tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank Jay for putting up with me. Um, I think we did okay tonight. There were no major meltdowns. And I think our the public came away feeling good about zoning. Hey, so. congratulations to, uh, to Deborah and Lenny on your first actual uh, commission meeting. Um, you did great. Um, and I, I, I just hope we all stay positive and uh, keep keep on uh, striving hard to uh, make this town even better. And there's Patricia Sullivan. We didn't even get to ask her knows. question tonight. <laughs> we could ask her all these questions about pot. <laughs> I was on my phone, but now I'm on the computer. I thought I'd say hello as you say goodbye.
Thank you, guys. All right, everybody have a good night. Good night, everybody.